Today, we're going to go over the simple forex strategy. We're going to go over something that I think is very important to discuss, and that's why it works. We're also going to go over some of the winning trades I've had over the past month. And just as importantly, we're going to go over some of the losses that I've had using this strategy over the past month as well. We're going to look at the differences on the winning trades and the losing trades, and we're going to give you a better idea on how the strategy works, how to improve on your wins and get rid of your losses. So get into the video and uh, we'll, we'll start by breaking down how the strategy works. Okay, so first thing we're going to cover is how the strategy works. So if you're a regular viewer of my content, you'll probably understand how it works, but we're actually going to explain right now how it works for those people who don't know the strategy maybe as well, or if you already know and you want just a quick refresher, stick around. If not, in the next part, we're going to actually go over why it works. And I think that's going to be something different today that will be important for people to understand. But first, let's get into how the strategy works. So to break it down into the most simple form possible. This strategy is a reversal strategy. It can be used in a continuation on a larger time frame, but we're not going to talk about that right now. At its basic form, this is a reversal strategy. We're trying to figure out what is the point in the chart when price reverses, how can we take advantage of that to profit from it? So in its most simple form, we're looking for something like an uptrend. And then we have these crucial points on the chart right here. And we call these true higher lows because these are lows that are constantly getting higher and higher and higher every time. But the importance of this is we want to make sure that these higher lows are actually important and valid for the trend. And we confirm that by using the MACD. Now to add the MACD, all you do is come here to indicators and you can just type MACD. Most of them are, you know, all the same pretty much. I just customize it to take off some of the lines that come with it. However, what you want to do is make sure that these actually align with the lows on the MACD. And as you can see right here, we have a low, low, and a low. And these all correlate with that. So if they don't correlate, then they're not known as true higher lows. It can just be called higher lows, but they're not true higher lows. True higher lows are important because we want to pay attention for when price breaks these. Because when price breaks these, this is how we can profit and benefit from this price maneuver. Okay, so the most important one to pay attention to is the most recent one in the trend. So as it's going up, you always want to pay, make sure to pay attention to the very last one of the trend. And the importance of this is when we see price break through it, that's when we know that we're actually going to get a trend reversal because a lot of people don't understand when trend reversals happen. This is one of the major and key turning points in a trend when you have price break below a higher low. And the same is true for the opposite. When you have a downtrend, you're looking for price to break a lower high. For example, in this situation over here, we have a nice little downtrend. We have many different lower highs. We can see this right here as one of the major lower highs we had price break it, but didn't actually do a true break. And we're going to cover that in just a minute. So the next most recent one was here. And then we had this become the most recent one. As you can see, when we had price break above that, that's when we had a reversal into this uptrend. Now we're having the same thing happen here where we have this uptrend and then we're getting a reversal of that. So like I just discussed, just said the word true break. So this is another thing. You can have breaks of these lower highs, but you have to make sure it's a true break. How do we know what a true break is? Well, it's very simple. True break consists of the candle breaking out of the break line. And whatever candle breaks out of the break line, you must see a candle close below that candle. So we mark the wick here. And as soon as we see a candle close below that line, it's considered a true break. And right here, this candle here, is the candle that we saw close below the breakout candle. And that's how we know we had a true break. And then that is our confirmation that says, OK, we are going to turn into a downtrend. So now this is the very basic first step of the strategy. And now I'm going to cover why it worked. And this is the most important thing to talk about today because there's a lot of strategies out there. But if you don't understand why it works, it's not going to help you to have more knowledge about the markets and it's not going to help you be able to read the charts like a pro. 
having this knowledge and being able to understand why these things works can actually help you to form your own strategy or further develop a strategy that already exists. So we're going to cover why it works. Okay. I want you for a moment to imagine that you're a trader and you want to buy this trend. You see that the trend is going up and you want to take buys. I'll need to ask you as a trader, you know, if you're a beginner trader, intermediate pro, doesn't matter. Majority of traders are going to look for certain areas to take buys. And where's that going to be? Resistances and supports. Those are areas that, you know, people are going to buy it. So here, for example, you know, here you have, you know, support and resistance lines here, you have support and resistance lines. And let's say here, if you're looking to place buys on this uptrend, you're most likely going to be looking for these areas here, right? You want to see price bounce off that you want to see price, you know, bounce off here, possibly take a buy price where to come up here and then fall back into this line. But price never did that. So where's the last place that you would have probably as a trader taking buy positions? Where's the last place you would have taken a buy? Well, as you can see right here, you can also see all these wicks show that there's a lot of buying pressure coming in from this area. And if you're a trader, you're most likely going to be looking to take a buy here. You know, you got a lot of support levels here. As you can see all these wicks signal that a lot of buying pressure came into this area. So if you're a trader, you're most likely going to be taking a buy here. Now, where are you setting your stop loss? Well, it depends on each trader, but on average, you know, most people are going to be setting something like this, looking to take, let's say a nice buy up to this level. Let's say you're just going for a nice one to one right? Let's say that's your trade. Well, let's play out. For example, if we were taking a buy here, what would have happened? So we're sitting here in the trade and now we're down profit and we're like, Oh my God, we are down a bunch of money. What are we going to do? It almost hit our stop loss right now. As a trader, you're going to be thinking one thing you're going to be thinking I am down $900. I just need to break even. That's all I'm asking for. I just need to break even. So I am hoping to see price come back up to here. And as soon as it comes back up to here, I'm going to cut my losses or you know, not cut my losses. But I am going to try to exit out of the trade as soon as price comes up here. Chances are that there's a lot of people thinking the exact same way. There's a lot of traders telling themselves that they want to exit right there because they just want to break even. That's all they're looking for. They're like, you know, this is clearly taking a turn south. Trend is definitely reversing. I just want to take, you know, a nice break even trade. So hopefully price can come back. Here. So when you have all these open positions coming back up to here, and as soon as it comes back up to this line, there's a lot of people going to be closing their trade here. And as you can see, this wick here actually indicates, let me take mark this out real quick so as you can see this wick right here actually shows that there's a lot of pressure coming in at these levels so as you can see the signal is a couple things it signals that people are exiting their trades here that originally took by buy position so they're closing their trades and it's also signaling that as sellers if you're a seller now and you're looking to take a sell where are you going to take a sell most likely here so there's all of a sudden a lot of pressure coming in the market there's people closing their trades there's people taking sales and it's all going to happen at this line right here so that is why this strategy works so well because when price reverses it's going to come back to this break line most of the time this is where you're going to look to take your sales now if you're training the simple forex strategy you're going to set your stop loss above there you know, at least by a couple pips and you're going to look to take your profit you know, let's just go for a one to one for example now you have all this pressure coming in the market which is going to drive price down into your take profit this is going to provide so much fuel for the downtrend and that's why you see so much momentum come off of that now that's pretty much just the premises of the strategy i have a lot of other videos discussing it in more in depth but today i just wanted to talk about why this works so well and i also want to go over some of my trades and show you examples of what works and what doesn't and uh, we're going to get into that in a minute but before we continue 
Without a broker, I wouldn't have been able to take any of these trades and I wouldn't have and I wouldn't be able to be a full time trader. Brokers are very important to each every individual trader. And if you haven't found one that fits your style or one that you like, you need to be exploring your options because brokers are a very important part of the trading process. If you don't have one that you enjoy, it's very important to find one that you're going to be satisfied with. Now, personally, I use Hanko Trade and I've been with Hanko Trade over the past couple of years. They are an excellent broker offering great advantages. These advantages include spreads as low as zero pips, low commissions and account types that fit your trading style. You know, if you're a scalper, there's going to be an account that's really good that has good advantages for scalpers. If you're a swing trader, there's going to be an account for your style. It all depends on what you like. Hanko Trade offers all sorts of different account styles. They have spreads as low as zero pips. They have fast, efficient market execution, and they just came out with their new trading platform hanko x so if you're looking to sign up with hanko trade i'll have a link in my description okay now like i said we're going to get into some of the trades that i've taken first we're going to go over some wins and we're going to go over some losses we're going to discuss the differences and how to be profitable by eliminating those losses okay this brings us to us 30 one of my favorite pairs to trade us 30 is something i like to trade because it's fast volatile and it's one of my favorite pairs that i feel works the best with the simple forex strategy um, for example you can see how perfect of a trade this was this one was an early morning tuesday i ended up getting a perfect entry on this one with literally almost zero drawback you know was in and out of the trade within just an hour or so let me see exactly what it was it was about an hour and a half i was in and out of the trade but something important to cover here is it's not going to look like this all the time this is a literally perfect example of how it works. Most of the time it's going to be a lot messier than this, but I figured this is a good place to start because it shows the exact strategy and what the perfect example of it looks like. But we're going to show you some of the other trades we took and it's not as good. But anyways, here we go. So like we mentioned before, uh, when you're in a downtrend here, you want to mark out the lower true highs. You know, this was a lower true high here and then you had this one here and then this one here and then we had price break above it and we had our true break we had our breakout candle here and then we had the candle close above the breakout candle so this was a signal for us to look for an entry and then we ended up just taking an entry right on the break line here as we said before making sure to have enough room here to make sure that price doesn't hit our stop loss you know if we were a little tight here it might hit our stop loss luckily we got a perfect entry on that with little to no drawback at all. Um, but either way, you always want to make sure to keep your stop loss a couple pips away from the bottom here, just in case. So some key things here to pay attention to is we did have reversal divergence. And I think this is a strong signal for us. We're always looking for this. We had a little bit of reversal divergence here, just a little minor one uh, showing that momentum was changing to the upside. So this is just an extra confirmation, extra signal for us to feel confident about this trade. Something else that we should cover here as well is it's always good to use the volume profile. I discussed it in my last video, um, but as you can see right here is a major high of the volume profile. So I knew that price most likely wasn't going to surpass this area. And as you can see out of this entire trend, this had the most volume in this area. So I knew this was going to be a prime spot to look for our entry. Um, so that's something that is good for an entry. We also kept in mind that it's going to be very tough for price to break below that. Okay, so that was our US 30 one. We're going to get on to the next couple trades here, next couple winning trades, and then we're going to cover a couple losses that we took. Okay, moving on, we are on USD JPY. I ended up taking this trade just over a week ago, and this is an example of sometimes when trades do not go the way you want. We ended up closing this one for a break even or just about a break even. I think we were only like up maybe $50 or so on this trade. So this is an example of when things don't look perfect. But if you can pay attention, you'll notice that it follows the exact same rules for the strategy. It just doesn't look perfect and clean cut. 
Um, but as you can see, we had a nice little downtrend here and we marked out the lower highs. And then this high right here, this ended up being the most recent lower high. As you can see, we had a clean break of that lower high pulling back. We ended up taking an entry on the break line here and then ended up pulling back, almost hitting our stop loss. Um, I was using this right here as the low. Realistically, I was being a little greedy. I should have maybe placed my stop loss below there, but either way, it still worked out. We didn't get our stop loss hit. But I will show you an example later on why you should keep your, your stop loss below the ultimate low here um, and don't get greedy because sometimes that will lead to a loss. Anyways, here I was looking for a nice simple one to one. We were almost at an all time high, so it was going to be a little harder to see price breaking all the way up here. So I was going for a nice simple one to one on this trade and it got pretty close, but didn't end up hitting my take profit. So I had to take a nice, that was like a $50 win off of this, this one, pretty much a break even for me uh, before seeing price go down and which would have hit my stop loss. So it was a good thing there that I took a break even trade. Uh, now for this one, same thing, we had reversal divergence here, which is a strong indicator that price is going to in fact do a reversal. Now, it's important to remember every single time there's a reversal divergence, that doesn't mean that there's for sure going to be a reversal. It's just a strong indication that could be a, re a reversal. So paired with something like the simple forex strategy, this can add a lot to the strategy to take your win rate to the next level. All right, let's move on to the next win. Okay, so this next trade here on Euro USD was pretty clean cut. It you know, wasn't a perfect example, but this was a pretty basic trade for me, something nice and easy. Um, so same thing, this was another downtrend. Uh, just over a week ago, I traded this one and we had the lower high here. Now something really key and important to note here is just how extreme the reversal divergence we had was. So we had a low here going to a low. And as you can see on the MACD, we had a low going to low, but just an extreme opposite from here showing that the momentum is definitely switching. Uh, so we, I knew we were gonna have a pretty big push off of this one, especially because we weren't, especially because we had all of this kind of room to the top here. I knew we were gonna get a nice trade out of this. So my target here was just this area right here, which is basically just the, just the top of this trend. I knew that price was gonna at least hit the bottom of this one, push into here and maybe pull back off of it, like literally what we saw right here. Uh, so this was like a nice one, almost one to two trade off of this. I definitely could have got one to two, but I just wanted to target a specific area rather than a specific risk to reward ratio. Uh, so this trade was pretty simple, pretty easy. Now let's get on to our first loss and we're going to discuss something that we discussed prior already, but something that I should have been paying attention to. Okay, so we are on odd USD. This was a nice little one minute scalp that I was planning on taking on Tuesday. And because of my own greediness, I got caught up in a loss. So same thing here, we had a nice little downtrend. Uh, here was the lower high that we ended up choosing to wait for a break. We saw a break, we could have entered here. Unfortunately, we never got into the trade, so we had to wait for another pullback. Had a perfect little pullback into our break line. Enter just as always. Uh, at this point we were up, I think it was like one to, yeah, one, just about a one to two. We could have also taken our profit there, but I knew we had all this room here to work with in terms of price action. I knew that we had all this space to work with. So I knew price could go a little bit higher and I was looking to get a nice one to four out of this trade. So because I was looking to get a bigger risk to reward ratio, I ended up being a little greedy here and placing my stop loss a little too tight. Um, and like I said, it's important to place your stop loss at the very low. However, if I place my stop loss here, I would have only got a one to five and I was looking for something a little bit bigger. Now, normally I do place my stop loss here, but I'm human as well. We all make mistakes and this is something that I continue to learn from every single day. Uh, unfortunately, it did. It actually technically didn't really hit my stop loss on the chart, but because of spreads, um, it ended up taking me out of the trade. Anyways, now it's important to remember that confirmations can help you, but you should never change your stop loss just because of confirmation. And this is probably where I messed up here. 
I ended up using the volume profile. And uh, as you can see, if we replay here, I saw that we had a lot of volume in this area on horizontal level. So I thought to myself, there's no way that price is gonna come back and push past that. There's just a lot of resistance in this area. So I should be fine. I should be able to have a tighter stop loss on this trade. And unfortunately, it never worked out that way. And I ended up getting stopped out. So confirmations are there to help you, but they are not there to make you lose. So don't just base your entire stop loss off of a confirmation. That's the moral of the story. Um, so that's one of the losses here. And uh, yeah, I think that's all we're gonna cover for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I don't wanna go on for too long here, but if you want to dive in and learn more about the simple forex strategy, look through my videos. I will have a ton of information on the simple forex strategy more in depth. And uh, if you liked the video, please feel free to leave a like. That's all I ask. And thank you for watching.